Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a sedge pattern. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H130 barbless hook. This one's at size 12. It's on a fine wire in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Fishon. It's ultimate tying silk. As you can see, it's black. As always with the silks, I'm just going to add the tiniest spot of super glue to the shank of the hook. And this helps bed the thread, embed the thread onto the shank. Wax doesn't cut it with these silks, um, you still get body rotation. So the super glue just stops that uh, and it's ideal for that purpose. I'm just going to take away my rat's tail. I've run my thread up the shank to approximately where a bar would be on a hook and now in open turns I'm going to bring my thread back up to the top. Now I want to create a dubbing loop for this fly so what I'm going to do is just run off some thread off my bobbin and start to make my loop. It doesn't need to be a big loop, about three inches this one. And I'm just going to leave that to the side. Now, this idea for this fly came from a lad called Nathan Gittings, who I was lucky enough to control last week at the Rivers Masters competition. And what he uses for the body is some razor foam. He used yellow. I don't have any. I've got this old patch that I use for cleaning off uh, coloured resins from my dubbing needle. So I'm going to take a small piece of that uh, and just cut it from the edge here. It doesn't need to be overly straight or fancy. I'll just take that off and then I can catch that in just at the edge. Don't want to take too much of it, just enough as to hold it into place. As you can see it's like a couple of turns worth. Then I'm going to bring my thread all the way back up to about a quarter of an inch from the eye of the hook. Next then, I'm going to bring my body foam round. I'm not putting much pressure on this. I want to keep it nice and buoyant. And I'm just turning it to create the body. Get three or four wraps until you reach your thread. And then holding it on top, bring that over to hold it into place. Get a couple of wraps, don't pull too tightly with your nano silk, it will just cut straight through the foam and you'll be left with a little coily foam back which you don't want. Then you can come in and remove the waste. Next I'm going to prepare my rib using my dubbing loop and what I have here is a natural CDC feather. I'm just going to grab the end and I'm going to pull it so that all the fibres stand out a 90 degree angle from the stem. Next I'm going to put this into my um, Pettijohn clip like so and uh, if you've not seen the Pettijohn clips they're very clever nice bits of kit and uh, handy for this sort of thing Then I can come in with the clip part and just remove that and see what you see now is I've got both sides of the CDC trapped into the clip and I can simply trim away the stock like so and then I'm going to grab my dubbing loop now unfortunately I've got a lot of stuff packed away or misplaced so I haven't got a dubbing loop spinner I'm just going to use a fly clip here which is a, a great little hack you know, if you've not got a, a dub and loop spinner and you don't use it very often, you might want to save yourself a little bit of money and just use a fly clip. I have got one, I've just no idea where it is at the moment. Okay, once that's into place, I'm just going to use the fly clip. It's not quite as efficient as, the, as a proper dub and loop spinner, but it's better than nothing at all. 
So bear with me while I spin it up. And once that's spun into place, what I can do is I'm going to get a couple of turns onto the shank of the hook in behind the foam just to bring up the CDC and then the first turn goes at the back beyond the foam and then I can come up and make a rib. Now it's up to yourself really how much of the red you want to show through or the yellow. Uh, Nathan when he showed me the original used yellow foam and he probably didn't tie it like this but it was a pretty poor photograph and I am just going by an approximation. So I'm bringing that up through. It's looking pretty good. Bring it over the top and then I can catch that in with my thread. Like so. A couple of turns in front to make sure it doesn't back off. And then, whoops, you can come in with your snips and just remove your excess. Okay, so that's looking pretty decent. I'm going to bring everything back and have a little tidy up there. Now, before we go on, I'm just going to add a little bit of wax to the silk. And before I add the next lot of components. So, next, the underwing. I've got a couple of CDC feathers and I've just simply married up the tips. I'm going to dress that up and I want that to be approximately the length of the shank of the hook. That looks okay. Hold it on top. A couple of turns just to hold that into place. And then you can come in and remove the excess. So far so good. Okay, the next component then is some ultra dry yarn. This is the brown and what I like to do with the yarn, you can see it's quite tightly spun. I like to grab my uh, comb, just brush out a little bit so it's nice and uh, fluffed up. Now I don't want all that, just uh, take about three quarters and I'm going to just show it up to the, the shank, save as much as I can. And just off camera, I'm taking that little piece and snipping it. Then I can bring it up with my waxed silk. Remember to use a bit of wax. And just catch that into place. Nice and tight. And the nano silk, what, what these nano silks allow you to do is you get lots of turns for a very little bulk, which is ideal. Okay, so that's uh, looking pretty decent. And what I want to do next is come in with an overwing. I'm using some coastal deer hair for my overwing. This one's been dyed picric. And I'm going to come in and take approximately a centimetre from the pelt. Now when it's come off you want to just get rid of any of the excess give it a brush through to get any of the under fur out uh, the stuff that's been dyed actually generally is pretty well behaved so once you've combed it out you can pop it into your stacker make sure it's uh, tapped down and then when you open up the stacker, you've got all your tips aligned there. And I'm just going to grab that with my left hand. Now, just remove any excess that you may have. Uh, there might be some stray fibres you want to pluck out. And then you can dress that up to the fly. And it wants to be approximately slightly over where your ultra dry silk was. Now I'm not going to um, trim anything, I'm going to lay it on like so 
coming with my left hand, thumb and forefinger, just to hold it into place on top. Then in a pinching loop, I'm going to come over the top, gently at first, I don't want the nano silk cutting through my deer hair. I'm going to get two or three turns to hold that into place. Next then, I'm going to grab the excess deer hair, pull it back, get several turns in front just to stop it backing off. Then with my whip finish tool, I can come in and give that a really good whip finish. Make sure it's not going to go anywhere. And then remove my waist. Okay, so we're obviously not going to leave the fly like this and it's a case of trimming down now to suit yourself. Now I want to get the bulk of this in my fingers, I am in my dining room and I want to have my wedding tackle intact when my wife wakes up. So I'm going to grab that, excuse my fingers, and I'll take the bulk of that away. And I'm just going to carefully start coming in and trimming up any excess. Takes a little bit of time to get this bit right, but the tidier you are, the better the fly will look to the eye. I don't think it makes much difference to the fish, but as a tire, you want your, your flies to look tidy and you want to clear the eye as well so you, when you come to tie it on on the river bank or the, the lock side it's nice and tidy. Now I'm just clamping down now with my thumb and there you have a very effective sedge pattern. Now as well as this it's also buoyant enough to float a nymph uh, around 0 0.10, 0 0.12 uh, it should support that no problem at all. If you're after an even higher floating cider fly for duo, check out the video on screen now. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time.